In this introductory video, we will explore the fundamentals of working with Fusion. We will start by creating a composition, loading footage, setting our frame format preferences, affecting the footage with a tool, then saving it to disk and performing a final render. Before we create a new composition, we should explore the preferences used when creating a composition. Select File in Preferences to display the Preferences dialog. Note that the Preferences dialog currently has a single entry in the tree on the left-hand side, labeled Globals and New Flow Defaults. The settings in the controls below are either global to everything that happens in Fusion, or are used when creating new compositions. Let's examine the Frame Formats panel of the Global Preferences, which is currently set to the default format of PAL CCAM. This is the format that will be used whenever a new composition is created. Choose one of the options from this menu to most closely match the type of footage you will be working with. In the cases of this tutorial, I will be leaving this in PAL CCAM mode. Close the Globals panel, then select File and New to open a new composition. Note that the composition appears in the Preferences dialog. Open its settings and you can see which settings have been copied from the Globals into the new composition. The Frame Format panel also appears here and is set to the default format from the Globals in my case, pal -CCAM. Scroll up and change this to NTSC D1, since that's the resolution of the footage we will use in this tutorial. The width and the si height are now set to 720 by 486, the frame rate to 29.97, and the aspect ratio to 0.9 to 1, all of which match the standards for the NTSC file format. We can create new file formats that aren't listed using the buttons at the bottom. Select Save to continue working with your composition. We are ready to import footage and begin working on it in our composition. Footage is loaded into Fusion using the Loader tool. Locate the green LD button in the toolbar at the top of the screen. Click once to add a Loader tool. This will automatically display a File Browse dialog which allows you to locate your footage on your drives. In this case, we are locating the footage in Courseware, Footage, the Sign folder. This contains a sequence of files in the JPEG file format. Select any one of the files in the sequence. Fusion will understand that this is a file sequence and automatically load all of the files. Click on Open, then view the tool in the large display view by clicking and dragging it into the view. Place your mouse over top of the loader's tool tile in the flow and the pop-up dialog will appear, showing the name of the footage, its frame size, pixel aspect, and color depth. In this case, our footage is 720 by 486 or NTSC D1. However, it is using a pixel aspect of 1 to 1 and the color depth is 8-bit integer. How did Fusion determine to use these settings? Look at the loader's controls on the right-hand side of the screen. The first control is process mode. This is used to determine if the footage will be processed in full frames or using one of the fielded modes common to video. In this case, our footage was shot with a Canon XL1 set to frame progressive mode, so select full frames. Beneath the file name controls in this tab, you will also find the trim in and trim out. These can be used to trim flames from the beginning of the clip or from the end of the clip. Generally, a better place to view these settings is in the timeline display view of the work area. Click on the timeline tab to show the timeline view. The vertical yellow bar you see in the timeline is used to represent current time or the current frame, which is currently at frame zero. Click and drag on this bar in order to change the current frame and scrub through the clip in the view. You can change the global in and global out of your footage by clicking and dragging on the bar in the timeline ruler for it. You can also trim in or trim out by clicking on the ends of the bar and dragging them in or out. To hold the first or last frame, hold the control key down while dragging and drag it to the left or to the right. This will hold the frame for the specified period of frames, as you can see by the yellow indicator at the end of the bar. Return to frame zero and switch to the import tab on the loader's controls. The first option in the Import tab is the Color Depth buttons. This determines the color depth Fusion will use when processing the image. The default option is Format, which means that the file format of the source images is used to determine the color depth that Fusion will process them at. For example, the Targa and JPEG file formats are only capable of saving 8 bit per channel. As a result, Fusion, when loading these file formats, will not attempt to process them at higher color depths unless forced to using one of the other buttons in this control. The OpenEXR file format, in contrast, normally contains Float16 images, so Fusion, when loading these files, would process at Float16. 
If the frame format does not have a specific color depth, then Fusion will default to using the frame format preferences. You can also force Fusion to use the frame format preferences for color depth by selecting the default button, or to specify an exact color depth for footage that is being loaded, use one of the other four buttons in this control. The pixel aspect of the footage is usually determined using the From File option. The next control represents the pixel aspect of the footage. Fusion will default to trying to pull the pixel aspect from the file itself. Many file formats store pixel aspect as a part of the information in their header. If Fusion fails to find the pixel aspect in the file, it will default to using the pixel aspect specified in the frame format preferences. You can also force it to use the frame format preferences by clicking on Default. If you have to mix footage of different pixel aspects, it is often useful to use the custom setting, which will display the custom pixel aspect controls below. You can enter the custom pixel aspect in by hand, or right-click on the control in order to display a menu of all of the standard formats Fusion currently understands. An important part of loading footage into Fusion is ensuring that it is using the correct process mode, pixel aspect, and color depth to process the image. Now that we have set up our loader, we should set the render range of our project using the loader's range. We can see that the loader is 87 frames long, so we could type 87 in to the render end point, or we could right-click on the loader and select Set Render Range from the context menu. This will automatically set the render range to the valid region for the clip. The render range is used to set the frame range that will be used when Fusion performs interactive playback, which is started by using the transport controls at the bottom of the time ruler. When you press play, Fusion will play back only the section defined by the render range. The render range is also used during final renders and to determine preview render ranges. Once the render range is set, you can use the space bar or the transport buttons at the bottom of the screen to start and stop playback of the composition. The render range determines which frames in the composition will be played each pass through the shot. The render range also determines which frames of the project will be processed as part of the final render or for preview renders. Before we continue, we should save our composition. Go to the File menu and select Save or Save As. Fusion will default to opening in the Fusion Comps folder. Give your composition a name. In this case, we'll call this the Introduction to Composition, and then hit Enter to save your composition. The name of the comp will appear in the status bar at the top of the screen. Now let's add a scale tool to our composition to resize the footage to half its original size. Change to the flow view by clicking on the flow tab in the work area or by selecting F5 on your keyboard. Click once in an empty area of the flow in order to ensure that the loader tool is no longer selected or active. Then go to the tools menu at the top of the screen, locate the transform category of tools at the bottom of the menu and find the scale tool. Click once to add the scale tool to the composition. Since no tools were selected in the flow, the scale tool is added in isolation. It is not currently connected to any other tools. Locate the output on the loader tool. This is a small red box when it is not connected. Click on the output node and drag and connect it to the single input which is the golden arrow on the scale tool. This draws a pipe connecting the two tools. The image from the loader will now flow through the pipe into the scale tool for processing. View the scale tool in the right hand display view by clicking on the scale tool and dragging it into the view. Locate the scale tools controls in the tool control menu and change the value from 1.0, which is 100%, to 0.5, or half the original size of the image. The scale tool is currently selected, so let's add a brightness contrast tool to the composition by selecting Tools, Color, then choosing Brightness Contrast from the menu. This automatically adds a brightness contrast tool to the composition, selects it, and connects it to the previously selected tool. Now view the Brightness Contrast tool in the right-hand display view and increase the gain slightly by clicking in the Gain slider. Let's preview the effect of our Scale and Brightness Contrast tools on our composition. Move to the bottom time ruler and locate the Play button, then press Play to play through the composition. Fusion renders the frames as quickly as it can, caching them into memory as it goes. On the second and subsequent playbacks, Fusion will play the frames back at full frame rate. 
The frames that have been rendered so far are preview quality frames only. If the high Q checkbox next to the transport controls is not selected, if this button is not enabled, then Fusion will not render the final result quality image frames. Normally, interactively, the high Q checkbox is left off and only enabled to check individual frames while you're working. If you are working with frames that are larger, such as HD or film sized frames, you may not be able to store all of the frames you wish to preview in memory, in which case, Another alternative is to right-click on the tool, select Create Play Preview, and choose one of the display views from the menu that appears. For more information on previews, see the Previews and Rendering chapter in the manual. Once you have reviewed the settings of your Scale and Brightness Contrast tool and determined that you're happy with the way it affects your image, you're ready to save and render the results to disk. To do this, you must add a saver tool to the composition. Much like a loader tool loads frames from disk, a saver tool saves the results of your composition back out to disk. Locate the red SV button in the toolbar above and click on it once to add a saver tool to the composition. In this case, we will save the output to the footage sign proxy folder. We will save it as a sequence of files called sign period 0001 period JPEG. This will tell Fusion to save this as a padded file sequence using four digits as the file name padding, and to use the JPEG file format. Click on the Save button to add the saver and connect it directly to the Brightness Contrast tool. The Saver's file tab contains the file name, output format, process mode, and the frame range type used to render the image. Depending on the output format you've selected, different options will appear in the Format tab of the saver. In the case of JPEG, we see options for quality, whether to set a custom DPI, and whether to use chroma subsampling. Leave these options at their default settings. We are now ready to render the results of our composition to disk. Locate the green render button at the very bottom of the screen. Click on it once and it will display the render settings dialog. By default, the render settings dialog's configuration is set to final, as you can see here. In final mode, most of the controls you see in this dialog have been grayed out to prevent you from changing the settings. This ensures that Fusion will render every frame of your project at full size with the highest quality settings. To render lower quality settings, select Preview or create a new setting and then change the settings you find in this dialog. Re return to final and click on Start Render to produce the final rendered output of your composition. When the render is complete, a dialog will appear giving statistics describing how the render processed. To check your rendered result, click once in an empty area of the composition to deselect the saver, then reselect the saver to display the file sequence playback controls at the bottom. The saver tool has now detected that the frames have been rendered, and clicking on the play button in the very far right corner will cause Fusion to produce a file sequence preview in the left display view. You can use this to confirm that the rendered result is what you were expecting. This concludes the second portion of our introductory courseware video series.